Hello and welcome. Um, really pleased today to have uh, Tara Reese Beisber joining us to talk about uh, what actually happens in a divorce proceeding, um, both leading up to, during, so on and so forth. So, uh, Tara, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. So, um, I'll let you kind of talk about your experience, but in my experience dealing with women uh, that are either in or dealing with a divorce in some form or fashion, um, there's often a lot of, oftentimes I've experienced a big gap between expectation, uh, expectations and reality. Um, I don't know, I don't know if you have as well, but um, I thought we'd just chat for a few minutes about that. So if you would, um, obviously with your experience as a family law attorney, um, could you talk a little bit about kind of what happens uh, either generally or more specifically in the state of Georgia, uh, what happens um, when divorce is filed and kind of the process from there? Sure. Um, I always tell people that unfortunately uh, divorces in Georgia are not sprints. Sometimes they even have to be a little bit of a marathon. Um, you file a divorce, but then you want to make sure you gather all the proper information in order to make sound decisions. So if a divorce is filed, a lot of times, especially my female clients might come to me and say, I don't even know how much money we have, how much money we make, how much money you know, we have in stocks, how much money we have. So like, I don't know how much help I'll be. And I'll explain the process. That's okay, because Georgia has set up a process so we can ask um, your spouse for all that information so that we can formulate a spreadsheet to say this is everything we have, and now how are we gonna divide it? So a lot of times they come to me with little to no knowledge or a lot of knowledge, but either way we can use that information they have and go from point A of, hey, we filed the divorce to where do we do go now is we gather information. It's called the discovery process. And once we have that information, then we can move towards um, either the settlement process, which is the recommended process, or the um, moving towards more of a hearing or trial process. So that's pretty much what we do almost every time right out of the gate when a divorce is filed is we do an information gathering month or a couple months. And that's why it's frustrating because it takes some time. So you mentioned, um, you mentioned a couple of routes, um, settlement versus litigation. Um, yes. And I think a lot of people um, come into the divorce process thinking they're gonna have to put on their gloves and lawyer up and you know, it's gonna get nasty and go to court, so on and so forth. And while that's certainly an option, um, albeit a much more expensive and time consuming option. Uh, could you talk about the ways that uh, a person can avoid going to court to reach a settlement that, you know, reaches a, you know, an equitable, equitable distribution of assets and a parenting plan if there's minor children involved, that sort of thing? Yes. So um, just like the information gathering, we always tell them, okay, now we have everything that we need in order to make a sound decision. Um, you actually, in Georgia, there's very few, to, I don't think there's any county that I know of that doesn't require mediation before you go to a final hearing. Mediation is a great process. You do not, the misconception there is you do not have to sit all day in a room with your spouse. You actually will sit in separate rooms away from each other and a mediator does shuffle back and forth, but that's okay because it is a, um, it can be a stressful process, but at least it's not in front of a judge and it could be an all day process. But you go in with an idea of what you think is fair. This is what we have. This is how I want to divide things. When it comes to children, you do have a parenting plan in the state of Georgia, which sets forth who has custody, um, who has what parenting time the other parent has, um, holidays, how are we going to split that, who picks up and drop, drops off the kids, um, who gets to make decisions for the kids, you know, you're fighting over whether or not they signed up for basketball or hockey, who gets to make that decision, those kind of things. Um, all that will be set forth in a parenting plan. We usually go into a mediation with a prepared parenting plan that are, and you should do this with any lawyer, um, should have, have that parenting plan looked at by your client before you get to mediation so everyone's on the same page. Um, I usually tell my clients this, we're gonna go into mediation and I'm gonna tell you what I think after 20 years of experience, what I think a judge or jury would do. And if we can get close to that, we should settle. If they are so far off, then maybe you take your chances with a judge or jury. Usually both parties are getting that same speech and both two good lawyers would know 
where that middle point is. And if we're here and they're here, it should probably settle. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it is cheaper. You're in more control. You're not leaving your future to this judge or 12 panel jury to, to create some weird plan for you. Um, you can actually take control of your life and make sound decisions in the mediation process. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I'm obviously not, a, not an attorney, but I always encourage people to, you know, try to find a resolution outside of court just for all the reasons you stated, just to save time and money and a whole host of other uh, reasons. Um, like the emotional reasons of being able to move on with your life and heal. Right. Um, which you bring up a good point. I mean, I think it's easy for you and I to kind of discuss this in a, you know, just a kind of a conversational manner. manner um, but we're obviously talking about people that are going through a super emotional time and they've got a lot of, a lot of stuff that they're dealing with, um, you know, with a spouse, with children, with other family members, with friends, with maybe their church or their community. So it's, uh, yeah. it's, there's a lot going on. And I think it's super important to have a, an attorney like, like yourself that is uh, professional and can move the process forward, but is at the same time empathetic and can help them kind of hopefully start to see the forest despite the trees. Um, yes. As an advocate, I always tell people that I want to give you all the knowledge and information for you to make the sound decision. I am not your spouse. I am not your mother. Like you need to make this decision. Will I give you legal advice and maybe a little push? Sure. Um, but in the end, it's your decision. And if you decide I absolutely can't do this, and a lot of times that has to do with custody, like some of the mediators pushing or the spouse is pushing for a certain custody arrangement. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to force you to do something you're not comfortable with. If you feel better that a judge decides it, let's go have the judge decide. Um, because some, a lot of times, not always, but especially the female clients have been victimized a lot during the marriage. I don't need to re-victimize them during the divorce process. Right. Right. right, right. Is there, um, is there a common misconception that you experience that uh, women or people in general kind of come to the table with as it relates to divorce or the process or kind of what you've kind of laid out has to happen for them to get, get through it? Um, well, the common misconception is um, that they are going to live the exact same lifestyle that they lived during the marriage. That's the number one misconception. Um, yeah, I've discussed that one before. <laughs> yes. Um, they come to me and say, well, I've heard that I'm just supposed to get enough support to just keep living this life. And I always say, well, I think that's probably written down somewhere. But the reality is you're taking one household, dividing it into two, which takes that same amount of income that you and your spouse have and dividing it into two households to run two households. There's no way you can have the same lifestyle. Um, I do get a lot of tears or pushback, but in the end, they understand. We do get other advocates involved as quickly as possible, like yourself. A financial advisor should be involved as quickly as possible. Um, so maybe other accounting ad, um, advice. I do want them to see an actual counselor during the process, not because anything's wrong with anybody, but male or female. If you can have a counselor during the divorce process, emotionally, you can heal through this better. Um, so a lot of advocates have to come together and make them understand listen, we're taking one household, dividing it two, and you're going to be okay. Your children won't suffer if they go from a six bedroom to a five bedroom house. Um, it's okay. They'll survive as long as the, if, as long as you are healthy as a parent, they'll be fine. Yeah. I think you bring up a good point too, that it's, um, it, it often makes sense to involve other professionals, um, like yes. a counselor, or perhaps a forensic accountant, um, yes. other advisors to make sure that obviously get this done right the first time because you don't have to go back later and ask for uh, modifications and adjustments and things like that, because that's just going to add to cost and drag out the emotional issues. Yes. Before mediation or before trial, but hopefully before mediation, because we hope to settle, we will always have a meeting with the, if we have to have a forensic accountant is somebody who would come in and value things. Um, sometimes they only value pensions, stock options, um, I won't get into all that because it'll take me a while, but they can do these things or they can value the businesses. Um, closely held family businesses are the probably most um, important asset in a marriage or the most um, valued asset in the marriage. And so we go in and value them and we will have a meeting not only with them, but also the financial advisor who has 
gone through to say, okay, I see everything you have, and if it gets divided this way or this way, these are the tax ramifications, or we want everybody involved so that I'm just, I mean, I know my limits. I'm just a divorce lawyer. I want to bring other people in to tell me, no, if we do that, Tara, this will um, do this to the client or that to the client. And I think that's important. I think some lawyers are like, no, I, I can do this all by myself. I, I think that's probably a lawyer's biggest weakness is they think they know more than they do. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for that. Um, as we start to wrap up, Tara, is there any one piece of advice or kind of one thought you would like to leave with folks that might be watching this? Yes. Um, if you think you can do it without a lawyer, you're wrong. Not because lawyers are the end all or be all, but if you truly have a divorce attorney, um, we can we can make sure there's no loopholes in any agreements. We can make sure you 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 reach the agreement, everything you needed to reach an agreement on. So six months later, you're not thinking, oh my gosh, I totally forgot he had a pension. Um, it's just important, even if you want to agree on something with your spouse, without an attorney, always come to, an, a, lawyer, to a lawyer to at least have them look over the agreement you think you reached. Um, that, that's very helpful. At least they can help you tweak it. Um, lawyers, I know we have bad reputations, but we are there to help. There are some of us that like to do good in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice and I appreciate it. Um, and, and thanks for your time, um, your time today, Tara. If, if folks wanna learn more about you, your practice, um, get in touch, what's the best way for them to, uh, to reach out to you? Um, they're more than welcome to call my office. That's 678-947-2988. And then they can just call, talk to the front desk, and they will schedule an appointment as soon as one is available. Yeah, great. And uh, just for folks that aren't familiar, your practice is up in Forsyth County, which is uh, north of Atlanta. Um, and what's, yes. your, uh, what's your website? It is www.rbafamilylaw.com. But we do cover all of Metro Atlanta. We are often in Fulton County, uh, Gwinnett County. I say all of. We don't usually go to DeKalb County, but I have good referral sources for you. So still call me. <laughs> Great. Thanks for that, Tara. Um, and for everyone, I'm Russ Thornton with Wealth Care for Women. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, if there's anything that Tara or I can do for you, reach out to us and let us know. And uh, with that, we'll wrap it up. Thanks again, Tara. Thank you, Russ.